Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm making a triple dog kennel with removable panels. So, so far what you've seen me do is I started to lay out all my parts in my lumber. I'm using poplar for the face frame, the doors and the side panels. And then I moved to the miter saw and started to cut everything to size. After I had everything rough cut to size, I went to my table saw and started to cut every part to width. You see all the parts laid out here. I went back to the miter saw and this time I started to cut things to the actual size. You can see the face frames coming along here for the three doors. And then I decided to use my Domino XL to make this process quick and painless uh, I love this machine because it makes loose tenons that are very strong and very easy to assemble after I had all my dominoes cut I did a dry assembly you can see how the face frame is coming along here pretty easily and the reason I did a dry assembly was to make sure that all the openings for the doors were square, but also that they were the, the same width. And guess what? They were. After everything was ready to go, I added glue and then it started to assemble the face frame permanently. permanently. You can see the ease of using loose tenon joinery. Uh, it's plenty of strong and it's so easy to assemble it. Then I added a few clamps to make sure that everything was square and the joints were tight and then I let it dry. I moved back to my domino and started to work on the side panels. I actually had a friend who came to take pictures and so I just put the camera on time-lapse mode and I work on, on all the side panels and the middle dividers. Right here you can see I'm using my, my router to create some grooves on the inside of the, the panels and the middle dividers. This is so that I can add a piece of plywood and also the metal mesh that will act as the cage. You can see the groove on both sides. One will hold the panel, plywood panel, and the other will hold the metal mesh. I went back to my miter saw and got a really cool story, I'm trying not to cut my fingers, and I cut all the plywood to rough dimension. There are two schools of thoughts when it comes to fitting things like this. People that square the, the opening, uh, or people that round the corners of the panel. I decided to round the corners, I think it's easier and it fit perfectly. Right after this, I went to my table saw with all the panels and started to cut grooves to, to give the appearance of, you know, like an aesthetic appearance. I forgot the name of whatever it's called, those panels, but that's what I tried to do. You'll, you'll see it later, it'll make more sense later on. Then I got another sheet of plywood and started to cut the bottom panel. I cut it at two size with my track saw getting kind of old for this but I got on my workbench because it was way easier to cut it then I moved to my table saw to cut the panel to width here you can see how the cabin is coming along and I decided to add some screws to allow me to assemble it easily Let me take a few seconds to explain how the middle dividers will work. So I used a piece of scrap that is the same thickness as this material, the same thickness here. So what I try to do is I found the center of this style right here. Then I mark the center on this piece. I mark the center on this piece. I line up this center and this center like this. And I'll make sure that this was square so I could get it. Mark the first line on this side. Try not to move it. Like this. Like 
my back. It gets me the crew for the dado. I'm gonna try to cut all this with a router. So I grabbed my router and with a three quarter inch bit and it started to cut the grooves, or in this case, the dados. <laughs> I started to cut the dados in the bottom panel. The poplar that I had is a little bit over three quarters of an inch, so I added a couple spacers to allow me to cut the groove a little wider. And once I checked that my stock can actually go in and slide uh, fairly easily, I went ahead and I cut those dados all the way down to their final depth which I believe was uh, three, three eighths of an inch. The fit for the, the panels was a little bit too snug still, so I grabbed a piece of uh, sanding paper with a stick and I just sanded it to allow me to uh, make sure everything was sliding back and forth smoothly. Then I went ahead and I cut the, the supports for the top of the cabinet at a pocket hole so I can attach them to the top. I went ahead and pre-finished the bottom to make it easier later on when assembling everything. Then I started to work on the doors. I first cut a, a piece square on the miter saw and then we'll move it to my stop so I can make repeatable cuts and then started to assemble the doors the same way as I did all the other parts. Again, I'll use my router to make the groove where the metal mesh will fit in. And like I said, this will make more sense as we continue with the build. One of the things my client didn't want was for her dogs to look like they were in jail. So she asked me not to use metal bars and instead to find a metal mesh. So we went ahead and we used this one right here and I think it looks great. I'm just cutting it with my angle grinder. Then I started working on the door hinges. I used the, the hinges and the hinges themselves to lay down my lines along with my marking gauge, my adjustable square to make sure that everything was as perfect as it could be. I used my knife to along the lines and then my chisel to pare away all the material inside my lines. Here is when I need to remember that it's not about getting the job done but it's about doing it right. The more time that you spend here and the slower that you take it, the better results that you usually get. Who would have thought, right? After I got all my hinges installed, I went ahead and I moved along to start working on the top. I'm using Naughty Alder here for the top, a quarter. I love this wood, it's very simple to work with, it smells great, and it looks nice. Same as before, I started to cut everything to rough size. After I had all my pieces cut, I went to the jointer, cut a nice square edge, and then I moved to my table saw to cut everything to the right width. You can see right here on the bottom right uh, part of the screen how I have the top. I cut everything to width and hold it with a clamp to make sure that I have the desired width. Once I had it right, I just had a little dense time. I decided to glue the top in three sections so that I can run it through the planer and make sure that everything was square or flat actually. Uh, something that I realized that I don't know what I didn't do is I didn't use my domino here. I had some, some alignment problems side to side and also up and down. Once again, I don't know why I didn't use it, but nothing that a lot of sanding couldn't fix. So after I had everything glued, I went back and I sanded for a long time until everything was smooth. When everything was ready, I went back with my truck saw, cut the top to the right size, and then sanded some more so everything was perfect. I get everything a quick sanding and then a quick coat of paint that I put in the corner. Uh, I did get the metal mesh and I used some black spray paint. 
you can see here how the, the metal mesh fits inside the doors that groove. Once I had on my metal mesh uh, ready to go, I went to my table saw and with some pieces of scrap pine, I cut three quarters by three quarters of an inch uh, pieces, uh, gave them a, a quick coat of paint, and then went back to my table saw to cut basically a, da a dado that would help me keep the metal mesh in place. After I had all my pieces, I went to my miter saw lay them all out by panel or by door and then I started to cut them all one at a time make sure that they fit correctly. You will be able to see how they fit uh, later on but this took a long time I basically grabbed one piece at a time took my time trying to cut as little as I could until I got the right fit and then I used my, my 18 gauge pin neller to hold every piece into place. Then I started to assemble the whole cabinet. I used some glue and then some screws on the underside. With the help of some clamps, I tried to do the best that I could to keep everything square and hold everything, hold everything together. So what that was trying, I went ahead and gave one quick coat of stain. I believe I'm using dark walnut stain on this um, knotty alder. After the stain had cured, I went ahead and with my gray video skills, I recorded myself putting a wipe on, wipe on poly coat on the top and then also on the bottom. I actually did about five coats of wipe on poly here so that uh, it has a lot of protection. That's where the dogs are going to be walking around, scratching all of that stuff. Then I started working on the trim for the cabinet. I actually had to cut down the trim a little bit, but then I used glue and pins to hold um, the bottom and top trim. And then after I had everything ready, I added some uh, wood filler, wood filler, so that I could hide all the holes. Right here, you can see how I'm attaching the, the top to the cabinet. I used an oversized hole with screws so that in case of expansion and contraction, the top can move freely. Right here you see I have a couple of filler pieces uh, for the bottom in case the, the owners ever want to remove the, the middle dividers. But if not, we have two panels that can be removed at any time. And then once those were in, I added the back, which is literally just a piece of plywood painted uh, the right color, so nothing to see here. But I did add it threaded inserts so that the back can be removed easily uh, when wanting to make any changes on the inside, or even for cleanup as well. Then I went ahead and enlisted the help of the wife to get the doors hung. Um, you can see how the, the metal mesh is held with the, with the frame, basically, with the, the frame that I made that is miter. Um, that's plenty enough. You know, if the dogs ever push on it, they will be pushing against the poplar, against the poplar so that's not a big deal. So that is three doors, uh, two side panels, and then two removable panels on the inside. And then I started to add the hardware. We added one on the top of the doors and one at the bottom so that there's enough protection in case the dogs need to push against the door. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I appreciate your time. Uh, the owner wanted me to uh, distress it a little bit, so I did some minor distressing on the paint, but this build was super fun. It took me several weeks to build, but I'm so happy how it came out. And the owner had told me several times that she loved it as well. What I love the most is they actually placed this piece right by the entrance of their house. So it's the first thing anybody sees when they walk into the house. So what an honor to build such a piece for them. So thank you for following along. I know it's a long video, but I hope you enjoy it. You learned something. You know what to do. Leave me a comment down below. Like, subscribe, do all this stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next one. With that said, bye-bye.